はいサワーパッチブルーラズベリーおサワーパッチブルーラズベリーサワーパッチブルーラズベリー Good morning, starshine! The earth says hello! c o u g h e d a bit b u z z e d I hope it's not got any caffeine in that at that hydration electrolyte formula I ran out of the supplement needs Luckily Jade came true with the goods at Gymshark the other week with the ghost hydration It's sold out everywhere and I can understand why it's like crack, it's unreal This unit is not labelled for individual sale. Try telling that to boss man down the road, man. I see what he's doing with the multi packs. Don't worry. He's secret safe with me. I'm not a grass. Welcome to today's video. I'm going to go through a full week of training, giving you insight into how I'm structuring things at the moment with my actual training, my runs, my swims, my Metcons. And we've got a quad session today and Metcon one. So Luke, I think he's coming down, Luke Johnson. We've got a bit of tennis next week, me and him. Centre court, Clay Nadal versus. That's annoying. What's a Greek? Greek tennis player. Ah, Stefanos Tisiapis? Hold on. This is a very poor intro. Bear with me. Two seconds. Pronunciation. Sitsi Pass. Feta cheese. <laughs> Banter. So yeah, next week we've got a bit of tennis, me and him. And then I'm going to go upstairs and we'll run through my whole week of training. And then tomorrow we'll get a session in that Feel Good Factory whereby I can do a little bit more in-session commentary. It's quite hard at David Lloyd. Although, there's a, there's a couple of really nice David Lloyds that have been recommended. I think it was like Rains Park is one of them and Pearly. And they're all right, we're filming down there. It's a bit more spacious and the lighting is better. So. Head down there in the next couple of days just to check it out. Right, I've literally got back to back to back to back to back concert calls today. Seven all the way until nine. So I'm gonna get these done. I've got a new book, Dr. Ranjan Chatterjee, fantastic podcast with Stephen Bartley. I think I mentioned it before. I think he's also got his own, I think he's also got his own, oh, that's lovely, his own podcast. Anyone else do that? That's got caffeine in it, innit? I feel a little bit mad. Right. Okay, let's run through an example training week for me at the moment. Now, this is being programmed based on no event. This isn't a prep or anything. This is just more a maintenance phase for me. More than anything, me and Adam did speak about a potential high rocks in November, October time, but obviously Mr. Collard, king of destiny's childish himself, has gone back in. So I'm not too sure on his availability when he, when he does come out. If not, I'll just run a, a high rocks on my own. It'd be a good chance to get some content as well. There's one in London, Birmingham, and Amsterdam. Might be quite nice to do an abroad one, get a bit of content there as well. So if not, that's what I've got in the back of my mind, kind of a, an October, November event time. So between now and then eight weeks out from that particular event, it's just a chance for me to improve some condition level. So this will be fully ran next week, this particular split, just because I've been waiting on a few things. I've got some new runners. George Hickton recommended the Nike Zoom X2s, I think they were called. And I picked up my bike as well from Ollie. Got myself a Specialized. Big up Seb. He said, shout out Seb. Don't know his last name. Begins with an M. Monster? No, I can't be it, can it? Big up Seb anyway. So uh, I took the bike for a run yesterday. Fantastic. Looking forward to getting some miles on there. All my stuff comes today as well. All my, all my jerseys and, and whatnot. So let's run through the split. Monday we have upper push and triceps and my swim. So that's broken down into four sets for chest, three for back, three for delts, and seven for triceps. Prioritizing my delts, biceps, and triceps, as mentioned in the previous video. If you haven't seen that, I'll be linked above. My swim is nothing too crazy. Burns around about 300 calories. 
And what I do is I do a one by 200 meter. So my Paul David Lloyd's 25 meters, so that's about eight lengths. One by 200 meter, two by 100 meter, and then four by 50. So in total, that's about 600 meters and 24 lengths. And like I said, roughly about 300 calories. Nothing too crazy for me at the moment. Tuesday is my lower pull and biceps are like a, almost like a posterior session. I've got my hip hinge in there and a little bit of back volume. So back four sets, hamstrings, eight, seven biceps. And I've got my 400 calorie Metcon ones. This is a pull bias Metcon. When I say pull bias or, or whenever I, you see me bias a Metcon, it'll be based off of that particular day. So if I've got a push session, for example, or any, any work that uh, prescribes chest or, or delts pressing movements, it'll be like a push bias or a pull bias Metcon. When I say that, I mean one of the one or two of the movements in there will bias a pulling movement. So it might be like a row, a ski yoga, it might even be like a renegade row as an example. Wednesday is my 5K run day, and this usually burns about 400 calories for me. Okay, so it's five kilometers. I want to get back into the swing of these. Got into a good routine before I went to Ibiza, got back in it. You know, you know what it's like when you get back, you kind of drop off a little bit. So Wednesday will be my 5K day. Thursday, I've got quads. Really enjoy this session, did it with Luke the other day, and a big hefty leg bias Metcon session of 500 calories. That's 12 sets for quads. You'd have seen the workout in this video. And then on Friday, I've got delts and triceps, which you'd have also seen in this video, and Metcon 3, biasing slightly a push here. 12 sets for delts, eight for triceps. Saturday is like a, a kind of filler, almost. So just to ensure that we are hitting our body parts twice per week. Got a bit of a filler, get some chest at four, five for back, and eight for biceps. So you'll see my back works kind of drip fed throughout the week. No conditioning for that. Wednesday and Saturday will be a chance for me to get into the sauna steam spa, spend a little bit of time on recovery and really being proactive and prioritizing recovery. Because I noticed this particular style of training leading up to our beef when I was doing it, I felt bad quite quickly. So I need to be a little bit more proactive in, uh, in my recovery. Then Sunday I got my cycle. So I'll plan out a cycle ride. This week I'm gonna go to Flow Coffee Shop number two, which is in Battersea, which is about 15, 16 kilometers away. So I'll cycle up, put the Garmin on, and you can gauge how many calories I'm burning. So roughly, just based on my size and the intensity that I cycle at, probably about 400 calories. So in total, within a week, you're looking at about 2,400 calories burned, 70,000 steps, and my weekly volume will be chest, eight sets, back 12, delts 15, as well as my biceps and triceps, uh, 15, quads 12, and hamstrings at eight sets. So there we go, that is a rundown of my training split. I think what will be really handy, and I've got, a, I've got a free week next week, I'm not going out, I've got no social events, so what I think I might do is, might be quite a hefty vlog, but film every day. So Monday through to Sunday to give you a full week of training and to, to really kind of break down and show you guys what I'm doing within the week. Because it's all well and good kind of just talking about it, but it's also nice to, to show it as well. Okay, there we go. I like Jimmy Savile with this on. Jingle, jingle, jewelry. Right, we've got delts and triceps today. So I open up all my delt sessions with some form of lateral raise, a bit of crucifix, being at a laying cuffed. Could even do some dumbbells. I like to do the cuffed lateral raise to begin with. Slightly different compared to your conventional. Usually the conventional is right at the bottom. I've got this particular exercise off Mr. Brighty. I just find this particular contraction is so much better as it drops off a little bit when you get to the top. So almost like mirroring a lateral raise machine like at Crayford, for example, or the one at Muscleworks, whereby once we get to this point up here, it drops off a little bit. So two sets, 12 to 15, and then I'll go into a press. Just a very small cue, and what you'll notice when I do my lateral work is that my arm, my hand, is slightly in front by about 10 or 20 degrees. Now, if we were to do a, a stereotypical lateral raise, we get to this position here, and any further up, you start to feel that scapular lift a little bit. Just where the acromion process sits at the top of the humerus, if we were to adjust our hand position in here, we can get an additional amount of range. It's not a huge necessity, but anyone that's got shoulder impingements or shoulder problems, I'll always recommend when we do lateral raise, we raise a little bit in front, as opposed to just being dead here. And that can go for dumbbell work, that can go for cuff work as well. 
So after my lateral work, two sets 12 to 15 are going to my presses, which tend to be slightly heavier. My rep scheme is one set of five to eight, one set of eight to 10. Similarly, when we talk about the structure of the shoulder and raising these arms or bringing these arms slightly more forward, we don't want to be in a position when we are shoulder pressing where it's bolt upright. Sometimes you see those machines where you're fixed in this position. It's very unnatural, going to cause a lot of shoulder issues. Bringing that arm forward slightly, much more natural positioning for when you are pressing. So any Smith machine work, any dumbbell work, you want to put the bench in this sort of position here. Okay, on to some superset work. Great way to drive some volume into the delts. What I'll often do is superset a press variation with another lateral raise. So we opened up with some cable lateral work into a heavier press, be it dumbbell, Smith machine, plate loaded. And now we'll use the landmine press into a seated dumbbell lateral raise. Natural progression for this will be to go from the half knee into a standing, but I'm often finding for the vast majority of my workouts when I am landmine pressing, I'm doing them all half knee. I find stability wise it's a little better, it allows me to concentrate on that delt a little bit more. Cues for this, the arm that you're pressing with will drop the knee. Feel free to use a cushion underneath the knee if you're finding it difficult. But very similar when we're doing an OHP, we want to drive through the bar. So when we're pressing, we don't want to be in this position here when we're pushing away from us. We're going to press forward as so. Like I said, the natural progression would be to go into standing. I feel more than comfortable doing this. We also don't want to be in a spot whereby we're going through. I know sports specific may get some coaches get their athletes to work on their power by pushing through. But for us, we want to keep torso nice, everything in line. Same as the elbow, we don't want to be out here flaring. We want to be nice and compact here. Almost like when we're back in school and we're doing the javelin, nice and tight, torso forward, bam. Bam. Then once you're comfortable, start to load it up. Okay, so we'll do three lots of the supersets, 10 on each arm on the landmine, and then 10 dumbbell lateral raises. We'll do these seated as opposed to standing. We want to take as much momentum out of these movements as possible. I think the lateral raise movements are a movement that gets butchered a lot. You know, if it means dropping that weight, leaving the ego at the door and spending a little bit of time in that shortened range, like with a lot of movements, when we're looking to, to progress a certain body part, and I got this from Joe when we were doing a lot of tricep work back in the off season, spending a little time in that shortened range is going to help amplify and build that muscle as opposed to using a lot of momentum, turning all this into junk volume. Doing this seated, taking the momentum out. Again, thinking about hand positioning, bringing them in front slightly. Nice fixed torso, chest up. One, two, nice controlled eccentric. If it means dropping that weight from 12, 10 kilos down to six or eight, so be it. You wanna get far, you wanna get a far better response doing this as opposed to Onto our final shoulder superset. Got this from Mr. Ryan Terry when we was at Gymshark. It's been kept in the, the plan. I do enjoy it. It's superset and a shrug with a front raise. What we did at Gymshark Lift Club was bench on the slight incline, straight bar. I just find that particular wrist and elbow positioning for my shoulders isn't ideal. The only time I can do that is if I've got a, a small rotation. I'm using an EZ bar, but any straight bar work for me is, is a pain and something that I don't tend to recommend. So we'll superset a behind. Smith machine is, is slightly more beneficial when doing any shrug work just so that the bar isn't kind of creeping up we can stay in that fixed position and then i'll show you my variation that i do with a dumbbell front raise so once i've done my shrugs i'll go into a slight leaning forward dumbbell front raise as opposed to doing it bolt up right here target that mid-range a little bit the way that the bar is positioned on this smith machine is quite handy in the sense that we can just lean forward Stabilise a bit better with the opposing arm on, on the side of Smith. Small lean forward, and we'll go as so. <laughs> 15 reps of the dumbbell front raises and 10 reps of the Smith machine trucks. I am running a little bit short for time today, so we'll tag on today's triceps into tomorrow's session. These things happen, it's about adapting, okay? It's no biggie. 
So we'll jump straight into today's Metcon. Good question from someone yesterday was, do you plan your Metcons? And I do. What I tend to do is bias my Metcon for the particular workout that I'm doing. So today we're doing like a pressing kind of Metcon. Yesterday we've looped did a 500 calorie. Every minute on the minute, five rounds, or it's four, but you rest for a minute. And we bias leg movement. So today we'll bias some pressing movements. We'll do three rounds as fast as possible every five minutes on the minute. So the first naught to five minutes, we'll do 10 single arm thrusters, five each arm, 10 burpees. We'll do three rounds of those as quick as possible. And then with the remaining time leading up to the fifth minute, we'll rest. So that's naught to five minutes. Five to 10 minutes, we'll do 10 barbell push press with 10 push ups. Three rounds of that as well. 10 to 15 minutes, 10 reverse lunge OHP with 10 single arm devil press. And then 15 to 20 minutes, 10 double arm double push press with 10 shoulder taps. So we're doing three rounds of those in each five minutes, every five minutes on the minute. Like I said, you'll rest with the remaining time. Every time I do that particular movement, I feel like I'm, well, hello, beautiful. Heath Ledger, <sighs> nice weather in it. Stop complaining about the weather. I'm bringing all this negative energy, I just stop it. Embrace it, guys, you know? Because in a couple of days time when it's raining, you'll go And then in the winter you'll be like, oh, it's too cold. Just embrace it, adapt, overcome, you know? Had a great tennis session with Luke. He beat me, but uh, we moved, burnt a nice amount of calories. It's like the dark horse for a calorie burner, that, my God, 850 in like 50 minutes. So yeah, hope you enjoyed today's video. The next one will be the eagerly anticipated, long awaited how to diet over summer. I had to stay lean during summer, so uh, got a few more shots to do. I went to third space in Mayfair. Thank you, Alex, for that hookup. It's greatly appreciated, mate. The aesthetic in that gym alone, oh, I love it. I love those sort of things, in, in them, that environment, it's great. Try and see if I can sneak back down there a couple of times to get some more content for uh, a few other bits and bobs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you there. Any questions on, uh, the workout split, any questions on training, you tap away below. You know, don't don't feel don't feel afraid to ask questions. I'm still new into this. And uh, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid, stupid question. Well there sort of is, but like, do you know what I mean? I think a lot of us when we do transition into these different types of sports or if we're learning a new craft, we're a little bit afraid. But like, don't don't feel afraid to ask questions, man. Con continually learn. Even at the gym shop lift club the other day, me and Jay were like, what's a devil press? And then when this, one of the coaches just showed us what a devil press was, I was like, oh, that's a devil press. So it's learning, isn't it? It's the, it's the way of life. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, good night. Much love.